British waters are seriously underrated. The sunshine might be temperamental, but you don't need to go to the tropics to see clear and diverse ocean. As well as the extensive list of algae, fish, mammals and invertebrates, we also have about 52 species of elasmobranchs here, including sharks, skates and rays. This may come as a shock to most, but there's a lot more swimming around our coastline than you might expect. But that doesn't mean it's anything to be afraid of. Once we've established we do in fact have sharks in UK waters, the second notion we need to tackle is that they all look like something out of Jaws. I present you with the small spotted cat shark. More of an extra in the 70s Hollywood hit than the main character, I grant you, but that doesn't mean these guys don't deserve a little bit of limelight. Like many species, the small spotted cat shark has lots of common names. They're most commonly termed dogfish, but they're just as much shark as the great whites of South Africa, and you don't have to go quite so far to find them. Here at Chesil Cove is a beautiful dive site, often graced with the presence of these little beauties. The best part about this species is you don't actually have to travel very far to see them. We're going straight off the coast here at Chesil Cove diving, and it's supposed to be a very reliable site to see them. However, it's always the way when you go out to film them that nature decides they've got something better to do than smile at the camera. So, fingers crossed, we'll have as good sightings as everybody else normally does. These sharks aren't fussy eaters. They feed on crustaceans, mollusks, polychaete worms and small fish. But they're also not above scavenging off the seafloor. Three second rule? This species doesn't have large teeth. Instead, smaller ones, which are primarily used for crushing shells, which means they have to get a little inventive and sometimes use their other teeth. Shark skin is very rough. They're covered in what scientists call dermal denticles, which directly translates to skin teeth from the Latin. Sometimes, when feeding, cat sharks use their rough skin to help tear apart their food when eating. Food aside, another very important topic is reproduction. Sharks reproduce in numerous different ways. The small spotted cat shark is oviparous, which means they lay eggs and the majority of the development of the pup happens outside the body of the mother. You can see here the egg cases, so you might know them as mermaids' purses, but this is what you might see washed up on the beach. Thankfully, unlike many shark species, these little cuties are actually listed as least concern on the IUCN Red List of Endangered Species, but that doesn't mean they don't face any threats now, or certainly in the future to come. So I am totally shark obsessed, always have been, always will be, and I feel like you can very easily go into rabbit holes of research. So give me a little bit of background on yours. My research is based on trying to reduce bycatch and fishing using LED lights. And one of the species I recently looked at was the small spotted cat shark. So obviously the small spotted cat shark is why I've dragged you here today, but you've said a lot of things in there that are probably going to go over lots of people's heads unless you're fully into your research. So talk to me a little bit about bycatch. So bycatch is the incidental capture of non-target species in fishing and it affects a wide variety of marine life. So it's led to declines in bird populations, in some marine mammals and some marine fish as well. So we really want to avoid this in fishing and there's lots of technologies now that are being developed to try and repel bycatch from, from nets so that we're fishing more selectively. As a marine biologist, most people think Maldives, scuba diving, why did you choose to study bycatch in the UK? So since Brexit, there's been a lot of changes in the policy around fishing. And even though there's lots of colorful fish abroad, actually in our waters, we have such a lovely range of fish. Well, I think this is pretty underrated. They might be very abundant, as you say, but I, I don't imagine they're immune to all the, the impacts that humans have on the environment. So what, what threats do they face and do they affect them at a population level or are they doing okay? So in fishing, they can be caught in large numbers, like I mentioned, but they're quite a hardy species, so they have a high survival rate and can be released. But we don't know the long-term effects of this release, so the stress caused by being captured or perhaps you know, internal injuries. So there's still a need to avoid catching them. In simple terms, talk me through the actual methodology of your research. It's all well and good saying these are the issues that we face, but how do you actually know this? How did you, how did you figure out a lot of this? researchers have now been trialling light on fishing gear to actually try and repel catch. So the catch that you don't want to get, we're putting it on illuminated escape panels, um, highlighting the net to certain species of fish that might be able to see that light and that you don't want to catch. So through manipulating fish behaviour and other marine species behaviour with light, uh, researchers are trying to reduce bycatch with, with light on fishing gear. 
if you're putting light on um, on these nets to try and repel them, do you find that that then attracts other species more? Is there like a cost benefit you have to do with this? So there's definitely an issue where we could be attracting more species. So my PhD is trying to see where light would be best applicable. So one big aim for that is to understand the vision of marine species and how they might perceive that light underwater because they have lots of different visual adaptations. So they might see a certain light colour, whereas another species might not see that light colour. And they did that with a study with turtles. So turtles are able to see UV light and they added UV lights to static nets in the water and they found that turtles were able to avoid the net whilst the target catch was maintained. So there are ways that you can sort of find differences between your target and bycatch species and there's lots of research seeing if we can separate them through their behaviours towards light. Because it's not in commercial fisheries interest to have bycatch, right? Exactly. And it's you know, it does take a lot of time to sort catch if you're catching the wrong thing. And of course, fishermen don't want to see the wrong thing caught and it can lead to mortalities and injuries of these, of these species. And are cat sharks a target anywhere at all? Are they used in anything? So no, they're not of commercial interest. I think if they're caught, sometimes they can be used as bait in crab pots, but they're more of a nuisance to fishermen if they're caught in large numbers. It can take time to sort them from the net and also, um, they have a high survival rate, but again, like I mentioned earlier, we don't really know the long-term impacts of this capture and release, so definitely need to avoid catching them. I know you're doing your research now, but I d with any results you may have got, is it uh, in line with what, uh, with other, what other research is out there at all or not? Yes, so with the cat sharks, I was testing their responses to light in big tanks and seeing if certain colours cause certain responses based on their vision. So I'd modelled their vision, how they might see light in an ocean environment and the model gave us a prediction about what lights would be most visible to them. And in the tank, we found that they were more responsive to blue and green and white light compared to red and amber where they weren't responsive at all. So one study found flashing lights in combination with sound reduced the amount of bait uptake from different shark species. So there are ways that we can test this in the field. However, with my staff found that cat sharks were seeming to be interested in the light, so they nudged the light device. And we don't want to increase their bycatch in a fishing context, but we could place the light on certain angles on the fishing gear, so we could you know, use it to illuminate the gear or to highlight escape routes so that they could leave the net. So it definitely needs to be tested in the field, but the research shows a nice link between vision and behavior. And so vision in general, a lot of people have the idea that sharks, and I know vision varies among sharks as well, but how good is their vision compared to the human eye? So cat sharks are likely to see the world in black and white, but they are sensitive to medium wavelengths of light. So if we know that they can see certain colours more than others, or certain colours seem brighter to them, or flashing light can deter them, we might be able to apply this to other shark species and use this to try and, you know, repel them from nets or see if we can manipulate their behaviour in a fishing context. So which species are you looking to apply this research for from the small spotted cat shark to, to what? So in UK waters, spur dog, that's prohibited to be caught by fishermen and it can be a really big problem if they do catch it. So if that could be applied to them, see if we can reduce their bycatch, that would be great. And are there any others or is it quite specifically the spur dog that you were looking to? So apply? the bull huss as well, that's closely related to the cat shark, so it would also have a similar ecology and behaviour and their numbers are decreasing. So again, we don't want to catch them as well and affect their population. So it applies to any UK domestic shark species with a similar ecology and behaviour to the cat shark. Such is life, things never go to plan. I refuse to believe you haven't had any research bloopers with these guys. So when I put some of them in the tank, as you can see here, they can be quite chilled out and sometimes they slept through the entire experiment, which wasn't ideal for my data, <laughs> but others were really, really feisty and they would swim, you know, really, really fast. Um, they'd be really reactive to the light. So it was really interesting to see how different their personalities were with mm. cat sharks. So you wouldn't want these guys in your experiment? No, they wouldn't be great. <laughs> You're not hired. <laughs> Does that in itself skew results if they're not bothered or not? Because So it potentially could, um, because some sharks, like I said, just were sleeping the whole time, but a lot of them did end up being interested in the light or, or nudging the light. So we got an average behavior, but yeah, you could definitely see differences in how they fed sometimes, like the first to be fed, or you know how chilled they were during the day. So yeah, in other circumstances, they were different. 
So we've established that the, the small spotted cat shark's very hardy. It can put up with a lot of stress. Why are they so good at coping with this? So I think for a small UK coastal shark species, they're really hardy, so they can reproduce quite a lot. So in some locations, they can lay 240 eggs in a year. Um, so they have that high reproductive rate. Um, compared to other sharks, which are more slow growing, slow to mature. So I think because they're so hardy, they're able to reproduce and they also are able to tolerate low oxygen levels because of that buccal pumping they have. So when they are hauled up on deck, they do have that high survival rate. So they are a hardy species, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't do anything and we know we should still continue to catch them. We don't know the long-term effects of catching sharks, the stress it might cause to them. So we still need to you know, mitigate for that. Yeah, we don't want to ruin their day for no reason. No, exactly. <laughs> so there you have it. We may have sharks here in the UK, but just because they're in the shallows, it doesn't mean we're in desperate need of Blake Lively and a flare. These sharks aren't what you see in the media, and neither are the large ones we have too. So instead of thinking sharks are something to be afraid of, instead, maybe they can be something you appreciate. We've just started small, but there's so much more we can explore in these waters.